Located in the northeast border of the Forest of Gold Trees was the former Priory of Martin. It was founded in 1154 by Bertram de Balmer and was the only Augustinian double house in England for Augustinian monks and Benedictine nuns. The term double house meant a settlement built to house a community of religious men and women in separate self-contained cloisters. The site itself would have had one or two churches, separate cloisters joined by a central compound, with the whole complex being surrounded by a precinct of walls and moats. Outside the main enclosure were barns, a complex of water management features and mills fed by the River Foss. Fish ponds and breeding pools were fed from the mill complex through water meadows to the pools, supplying fish as a staple food source. In 1158, while still living at Martin, the nuns were now referred to as Moxby nuns. By 1167, Henry II gave the adjacent territory of Moxby to the nuns, where they now had their own priory. The king also gave them 480 acres of land in Hewby, and the churches of Thormanby and Wemby. In 1310, they were still recorded as being Benedictine nuns. However, by 1326, they were now following the Augustinian rule. The monks and nuns undertook much valuable work in the local parishes, running almshouses, schools and hospitals, as well as maintaining and preaching in the local parish churches. In times of famine, a monastery was seen as a place of refuge for the poor and hungry. They both brewed beer and wine, grew their own crops, kept farm animals, bees, milled their own grain, had their own baker and dairy in order to feed themselves and the local community. Over the years, the sites have had their ups and downs. In 1322, during the First Scottish War of Independence, Robert the Bruce led the Scots in raiding parties across the north of England. This was also known as the Great Raid of 1322. It resulted in property being burned and destroyed, valuables taken from the wealthy, churches and abbeys being looted, with some residents and livestock captured and taken back to Scotland. In a letter dated the 3rd of November 1322 to the Prior and Convent of Bridlington, the Archbishop stated that owing to the recent hostile incursion of the Scots, the Monastery of Martin was devastated, its animals and property stolen, its villages and manors and estates destroyed by fire, so much so it could not support the College of Canons serving God there. He therefore sent to Bridlington, brothers Alan de Sherbin and John de Sowerby. At the same time, similar letters were sent to Simon de Bramby of Water, William de Craven for Drax, John de Maltby of Thurgerton, Stephen de Langtoff for Shelford, Ingram de Sema for Newstead in Sherwood. Fifteen days later, on the 17th of November, for safety, the Archbishop dispersed the House of Martin, sending the following people to safer convents. Sabrina de Applegarth and Margaret de Newsom to Nun Moncton, Alice de Barton to be the Prioress of Swine, Joan de Barton and Joan de Twocoats to Nun Appleton, Agnes de Ampleford and Agnes de Jacksmill to Nun Keeling, and Joan de Brotherton and Joan Blankfront to Hampole. The next day the Archbishop granted the Canons of Martin permission to remain on site, continuing to practice Mass and worship of God to the communities around the villages. They were to oversee the rebuilding of the Priory and repair the damage left by the Scots, with the bakehouse and brew house taking priority. In January 1325, one of the nuns was a bit of a naughty girl. Joan de Barton appeared before the Archbishop and resigned. What was the reason for her sudden resignation? Well, she was in a relationship with the chaplain, Lawrence de Sisford, the details of the penance imposed upon her, as to fasting and prayers, are in accordance with what was usual in these cases during that period of time. She was to be shut in a room by herself, on no account go outside the convent precincts for a year, and not to wear the black veil. However, Joan wasn't the only naughty nun. Previously, in a letter dated 1310, Sabina de Applegarth was identified as committing heresy, or to put it another way, decided she didn't want to be a nun anymore. She was ordered by the Archbishop to 
be removed from all office and administration in the house. She was to keep the convent in divine service, not to go outside the doors and not to send or receive letters. She remained at the convent as a housekeeper and servant to the other nuns. In 1328, with her past misdemeanours clearly forgotten, Sabina de Applegarth became the prioress. However, this was brief, as she was removed the same year with instructions stating she was never to hold an administrative post nor be allowed out of the convent ever. She also had a total writing ban imposed upon her, which meant she could no longer send or receive letters ever again. What exactly had she been doing to merit that? Either way, her career as a nun was somewhat checkered to say the least, as it appears poverty and chastity were not part of her natural vocation. However, it wasn't just the nuns who could be naughty. It turns out the monks were worse than the nuns. One of the canons, Alan de Sherbin, had confessed to inappropriate sexual behaviour with three women, Joe de Cartwright, Juliana de Maison and Maud Bondi. Stephen Langtoft, another canon who was to have a copy of the penance, had also confessed to inappropriate sexual behaviour with two women, Alistair Hareworth and Agnes de Hobie. Another mischievous monk was Brother Roger de Scampston, a lay brother of the house, who had also confessed to inappropriate sexual behaviour with five women, Ellen de Westmoreland, Beatrix de Galgoth, Ede again, Maud Scott, and Beatrix Barr. I wonder if this is where the term Rogering came from. However, the crimes did not go unpunished, and with these being some of the punishments given, confined to their room for long periods of time, fasting on bread, ale and vegetables, and only bread and water on certain days, on a daily basis say the Lord's Prayer, and confess their sins, not allowed to speak to a member of the opposite sex, not allowed outside the walls of the monastery, not allowed to send and receive letters, and removed from all office and administration duties. For the next 200 years, things carried on as normal, until Henry VIII became king in 1509. In 1531, Henry VIII declared himself the supreme head of the Church of England, and so began a programme of legislation to establish royal supremacy in law. The Act of Supremacy in 1534 led to the dissolution of the monasteries and subsequent disruption of life for much of the realm. This impacted Yorkshire quite a lot, given the many monasteries who owned vast areas of land where their granges and mills were an important part of the local economy. After the dissolution, new mills were constructed at Crake Manor and Stillington. However, these were under private ownership. The previous monastic mills at Martin and Moxby were also now under private ownership. At Martin, the mill was used until the 1930s before being demolished in the 1960s with a farmhouse now occupying the site of the priory. At Moxby, the priory was later converted into a mansion before being demolished in the 1850s. As of today, a farm now exists on the site of Moxby Priory, with no evidence of the mill. <laughs>